Hi everyone, in this video we're going to see the latest version of the DC login and register pop-up for WooCommerce. With this plugin you can show a pop-up to users where they can log in, register or reset their password without leaving the page they're visiting. We're going to see the redesign dashboard and all the options you need to configure but first, let me remind you that we'll be selling to the plugin, documentation and live demo with access to the admin dashboard below in the description or in the first comment and now Let's get to it. So the default way this plugin works is a guest user adds a product to the cart. I go to the cart, I see the product and when I click on proceed to checkout, I get this pop-up asking me to log in or register first. I can also choose the option to use the guest checkout, which is enabled in WooCommerce settings, or to log in with Facebook or with Google. And in order to close this, I have to click here. So let's go to the dashboard to see how we can configure this plugin. Let's go to Yid, Easy Login Register pop-up. So we have this redesigned dashboard with all these tabs and the option to collapse the menu. In the first tab, general settings, we're going to configure the plugin behavior. It is very important to configure the pop-up first to start using the plugin because that's the pop-up that will open automatically when guest users click on the proceed to checkout button like we just saw. So first we can set the pop-up size in pixels. We can choose to close the pop-up by clicking anywhere on the background as well and not just by clicking on the close icon like we just did. We can also choose to blur the background when the pop-up is open. And then we have the pop-up animations. We had simple fade in, fade out animations, but let's change this. We can choose simply to not have an animation at all, or we can choose fade in animations, bounce in animations, flip animations, slide animations, zoom. Let's do zoom in as the entrance animation and as the exit animation, let's do slide out right. And here we can choose the close pop-up icon. We're currently using the default icon, which is just the X. Let's save these options and let's see the changes. Let's click on proceed to check out again. There we have the zoom in entrance animation and we can click anywhere on the background to close the pop-up, not just here on the close icon. I'll click here to see the exit animation and there we go. Let's go back to the dashboard. Then we have the step options to configure the different steps. We have the first step, the login, the register and the lost password step. In the first step, we have the pop-up header text, the pop-up title, we can edit this. We have an option to allow the username and not just the email address to log in. Let's enable this. We have an option to add a custom text before the form. Let's enter a text. We have the user input label and the button text, which is continue right now. Then we have the social login options. We have Facebook login, which is currently enabled. And I have already entered the app ID and the app secret. If you don't know where to get this from, you can just click here and you'll be directed to Meta's documentation where you can find how to do it. We have the Facebook button text. We can choose a default Facebook icon or we can upload a custom one. Let's keep the default one. And here we can edit the colors. And we have similar options here for Google. We have the Google client ID. If you don't know how to get this, you can click here to go to Google's documentation and see how to do it. We have the Google button text. We can choose to use a default or a custom icon and we can edit the button colors. Let's save options and let's go to the side to see this. Let's click on proceed to checkout. Okay, so again, we have label first. Here's the text I just entered. It's above the email address or the username field. And here we have the Facebook and the Google login with the colors that I have set up right now and the default icons. If I click on Facebook, I'll get this window to log in with Facebook. And if I click on Google, I'll get this window to log in with Google. Now here's how these social login options work. If the user enters a valid username or an email address that's linked to an existing account on the website, they can complete the login and enter their usual password. So if the account email that they enter is the same as the one used on Facebook or Google, then the account will be linked after the user logs in. Now, if the username or email address they enter is not valid, it doesn't exist on the website as a registered user, then they can register using that email or a new one. Let's go back and let's move on to login. Before moving on, let me remind you to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell down below so you know every time we publish a new video. Now, let's continue. If the user enters an email address or username that's linked to an existing account on your website, this will be the second step, the login step where they can enter their password. But 
If the user enters a username or email address that does not exist on the website, they will see the register form in the pop-up. So in login, we also have the pop-up header text and the pop-up title. We can enter a custom text to show before the password field, what the password input label is, the text for the stay signing option. We can make the field check by default and the button label. And then in register, we can set the registration options and additional privacy policy and security checks. Same as before, we have the pop-up header text and title and a custom text to show before the password field the password input label, whether we want the user to repeat the password or not when registering. We can also make sure to enable this additional step for the password strength check. We can show a privacy policy checkbox to make sure they accept the shop's terms and conditions in privacy policy. And here's the text they would see. I have read and accepted your terms and privacy policy. Of course, in this case, these two are placeholders you can use for the related pages. We can make the privacy policy field checked by default. And here's the text of the button they can click on to register and proceed to checkout. And here we can enable the Google Recaptcha option so we can add this verification step to the register form. You just have to enable this and enter the Recaptcha public and private keys. You can find this in your Google Recaptcha account. Last, in the Lost Password tab, we can configure the password recovery options. Again, we have the pop-up header text entitled, a custom text we can enter before the form, the user input label. We can enable this option to make sure the email field in the Lost Password form is automatically populated with the email address entered by the user and the text for the send code button. And here we have the recover password options. We have two types to choose from. We have the classic mode. This is the standard procedure that is used by default in WooCommerce. The user gets an email with a link, then they have to click on the link and it will direct them to the password reset page where they can set up the new password. They will then have to go back to the checkout page to complete the order. For this option, we have the pop-up title, the custom text to show confirming that an email has been sent to the user to reset the password and we have a label for the recent email option and the button to continue. Then if you choose the code mode, the user will get a code by email and they can just stay where they are on the same card page with the pop-up and enter that code in the pop-up. This way they will never leave the page where they are and this will help you reduce the card abandonment rate. For this option, we have the pop-up title, the custom text, the code input label, enter code, we can enable the option to let them request a new code and we have the label for the continue button. And below we have the set a new password options. This is what they'll see after the code validation. This is where they can reset the password right in the pop-up. We have the title, the custom text, the password input label, the option to repeat the password and the text of the button to save the password and proceed to checkout. Let's save options. And now let's move on to additional pop-up. So as we have seen so far, the pop-up is opened when guest users click on the proceed to checkout button. But in this section, you can configure an additional pop-up to be shown when users click on another element and not just the proceed to checkout button. To do that, you can just add the ID or the class of the element that you want to use as the trigger to open the pop-up. You just have to make sure that the ID is preceded by a hashtag and that the class is preceded by a dot, like in this case. I have two different elements separated by a comma. You can use one, two, as many elements as you want to here. We then have the pop-up title, the register button text, and the save password button in the recover password step. All the other steps and options will be the same as the checkout pop-up we saw first. Now let's see how to add an additional pop-up here. Let's go to the site and let's make the pop-up open when guest users click on the card icon I have right here. Let's click right and let's click on inspect. This element has both an ID and a class, but I'm going to select the ID and use it as the CSS selector for this additional pop-up. So I'm going to double click here and I'm going to copy this and let's close this. Let's go back. Okay, so let's add a comma here to separate the elements. I'm going to add a hash sign because I'm using an ID, not a class, and let's paste the ID. Let's save. Let's go back to the site, refresh, and now I'm going to click on the card icon. And there we go. I get an additional pop-up here to get users to log in or register to continue browsing the shop. Let's go back. Then we have the customization section where you can customize the colors of the pop-up and the buttons. 
we have a lot of colors to customize. Then we have your store tools, where you can find additional tools to improve user experience, increase conversions, and loyalize customers. The best options are Ajax Search, so you can also add an intelligent search engine to your store and have customers find the products they're looking for. And gift cards, so you can also sell gift cards to increase your store's revenue and win new customers. And last, we have the Help tab, where you can find our video tutorials. Keep in mind, we have also published a video tutorial where you can see how to integrate Google and Facebook logins in case you need further help. You can also find a link to the documentation to learn how the plugin works, a link to our playlist to see more video tutorials, a link to the frequently asked questions to find answers to your doubts, and a link to submit a ticket in case you need help from our developers. And that's it. That's how easy it is to configure the plugin and offer your customers the easiest option to log in or register on your site. Okay, so as so you can configure and use the plugin, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and we'll meet again for our next video.